Well, hey, good morning to all of the fans of Turkey Man. I am Bullhorn Betty. I just wanted to give you your weekly update this morning on true crime cases. So for me personally, I cover a wide range of cases um, from missing persons to corruption and everything in between. And most of our cases, however, have to do with disappearances or death. So our top cases this morning are Idaho 4. This is the University of Idaho students. Four students were slain in their sleep in the early morning hours of November 13th between 4 a.m. and 4.20 in the morning just on the outskirts of the University of Idaho. The victims of that crime were Kaylee Gonzalez, she was 21 years old, Maddie Mogan, which was 21 years old, Ethan Chapin and Zana Canodal, both 20 years old at their time of death. Uh, the accused, which is Brian Koberger, uh, was caught in Pennsylvania after leaving Pullman, Washington area. He was a PhD student in criminology at the University of, or excuse me, Washington State U University, Wazoo, better, look, better known as Wazoo. Um, he is currently incarcerated in the Lataw County Jail. He's awaiting trial. Um, the trial is set for October. I don't believe it's going to take place in October. This is a very complex, uh, complex case that has a lot to it. This is a very high profile case for such a small community of Lataw County. We're getting a lot of pushback from the judges and the courts related to what we're allowed to know and see and touch and report on. Uh, there's been a, um, a fight in between the courts and the media related to the non-dissemination order as well as the Gonzalez family. Those hearings are gonna be coming up on June 9th. June 9th, um, the uh, Gonzalez family is going to be heard at 10.30 and the media is going to be heard at 1.30. Again, June 9th in Leyta County Jail. They're also gonna be discussing whether cameras can be inside the courtroom. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is because uh, Lori Vallow Daybell was also uh, tried in in uh, Idaho, her case was not able to be uh, recorded or put out there at the time of trial. It could only be done after the trial ended that day, and we could see what happened inside the courtroom. However, there was Twitter. I don't agree with that. It's a public trial. It doesn't matter how the public attends. A public trial for me is a public trial, but we'll see how the Idaho State Courts rule on this on June 9th. Um, there's a lot of motions that are coming out, a lot of orders and documents being sealed um, under the non-dissemination order, and uh, those documents are really primarily focusing on social media and what activity Brian had on social Social media, and I believe in connection with the victims of this crime. We also learned that there was IDs inside of his uh, Pennsylvania home where he was arrested on December 30th, 2022, and they were inside a glove, inside a box, so they were hidden, and many believe that they were either past victims or they were uh, victims that he was looking to make them become victims. So that's kind of your update on the Idaho Four. We also have a case called Madalena uh, Kojaka, or excuse me, um, Maddie Kingsbury. Maddie Kingsbury is from Winona, Minnesota. She's a mother of two, 26 years old, bright, beautiful, uh, just starting out in life. Um, she was living with her on again, off again, um, boyfriend. She was moving out and she disappeared. Um, I truly believe it's her significant other, Adam Fravel, but that's just my opinion. So far, law enforcement is looking for his roots and the minivan, her minivan that he was using the day she disappeared um, over in Fillmore County over. So um, I expect him to be arrested as, you know, evidence starts uh, coming in. Uh, once she's determined that she's deceased, I have no um, reason to think that anybody other than Adam Fravel would be responsible for her disappearance. Madalena Kojakari was an 11-year-old that disappeared November 2022, around November 21st to 23rd. It's a little confusing because the parents aren't cooperating. And she is now 12 years old. However, she's never been seen or heard from since. Her parents are currently... Uh, in the Cornelius Police Department, um, actually it's the, the county that they're in, they're in the county jail, 
and they're still being uncooperative. And Madalena Kojakari still has not been found. It is presumed that she has uh, met her demise, and it was because of her stepfather, uh, Chris. Um, uh, what was his last name? It's uh, Palmiter. Chris Palmiter is her stepfather. And her mother, Diana Kojakari, is also in jail right along with him. Um, it took them up until December 15th to let the, the school know that she, her, their daughter was missing. And it was the school that called the law enforcement after the school had been tirelessly trying to get a hold of the parents to find out where Madalena was. So this is not looking good for the parents. The parents are in jail for failing to report a missing child. And then we move over to the Alex Murdoch case. The Alex Murdoch case we followed, we did the trial uh, related to his case. Well, now he's being charged with the financial crimes and the fraud related to Gloria Satterfield and um, acquiring those funds fraudulently. Um, you, basically, Alec Murdoch is saying that he lied to the court to get that settlement for the boys. Well, the boys never got it. He did. So it was for him. It was a fraud for him to collect upon. Um, and then the Stephen Smith, which was the boy that um, was in and around the Murdoch family at the time, they he met his demise in 2015. It was rumored that Buster uh, had some kind of illicit affair with Stephen Smith prior to his death but we were enabled, enabled, never able to confirm it. However, the attorney, Eric Bland, has come out and confirmed that Stephen Smith actually did have a relationship with Buster. Um, so a lot of stuff is, is, is very um, interesting. We have a lot going on in these cases. I hope you stay tuned. If you are a true, true crime junkie like myself, don't forget to possibly come over and check out my channel, the Bullhorn Betty channel. We do coffee club from 6.30 to 8.30 every morning, Monday through Friday. And sometimes you'll even pick us up on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So come over. It's always a great time. God bless you and everybody else. And thank you so much, Turkey Man, for including me in your weekly summary. God bless each and every one of you. Until next time, please be safe and kind to one another.